I've been asking the Lord. I've been walking with God. And sometimes, because I won't start a meeting, I won't start talking, I won't do anything until I know God is in control. And until God gives me something, I don't speak. So I've been walking with the Lord back and forth, like pacing, but it's been walking with the Lord. And, and until I get a message, that's the way it is. And so you'll see me pacing a little bit, and that's the fire of God that comes on me. And no matter how long, there's a whole key in, in, in being human, living in the flesh, with the power of God in you, is your body never gets used to it. Okay? You learn to live with it, you learn to walk with it, but the fire of God, when it comes on you, causes your body to move. And the power of God is what we need, is the Holy Spirit. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That strength means power, empowerment. That's why Jesus said, remain here until you are empowered from on high. A, 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 a new, with, with power from on high. And so, we got to apply that today, people. It's God, what we've been doing has to stop. The church is out of order. People are out of order. We need to stop. The word of the Lord that was given to me today was Psalms 78, verse 1. And it fits perfectly. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. What's the words? Jesus. Who brings them? The Holy Spirit. If you're listening to God, then you have to hear what He says. Because you can't listen if you don't hear. I know there's people out there that say, God doesn't talk to them. It's a lie. Our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, they all want to talk to us day and night. Amen. There's no such thing as a subconscious. It's a lie. It's the Spirit. We are spiritual. God breathed into us and made us a living spirit, a living soul. We have to understand that. We are eternal. And you cannot be eternal if you're not spirit. But even the unsaved still has a spirit. And we choose whether we go to heaven or hell. Period. Whether you choose Jesus or not. That's the question. You're eternal. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. You're eternal. There's so many false teachings out there, watered down teachings. It stops now. The Lord Jesus Christ came forward to speak spirit and truth to us. Don't change what he said. They're changing the Bible. They've been doing it for decades. They've been doing it for generations. But you've got to understand something. The word of God does not change. Man changes the word of God. God made man. God is the word. Jesus Christ is the living word. Period. He's sovereign in that word. And no matter what anybody thinks, he's God. And what he has to say is law. See? That's the key. That's why, that's why he gave me that verse. Because Jesus, even in, if you look at Matthew 4 and Luke 4, when the devil came to test him, the third thing he says to Luke is, I say. We've got to understand that Jesus Christ is God. He's God. Whether you like Him or not, He's God. Whether you like it or not, He's God. The war against Jesus Christ began when Satan got kicked out of heaven. There was no war until Satan thought him better or equal to God. But above all the things of God, I didn't write the scriptures, but it's true. I know from the spirit realm also. Satan has had his way long enough. Now it stops. And I'm to counsel you to start listening to God and obeying Him. Don't just hear Him. Listen. Because if you're not listening, you're not going to obey. You won't. If you don't listen to God, you're not going to obey. Now you're in rebellion. First it's sin. The Holy Spirit will convict you. If you don't listen, the devil will move in and he has every right to do it. If you reject the Holy Spirit and his conviction, the devil has the right to come in and condemn you. 
I didn't write the scriptures. Go read them for yourself. In fact, that's a good idea. Why don't you start reading the scriptures for yourself? Stop listening to these people who are standing up in front of you. Half of them don't even know what they're talking about. And I'm sorry, it's true. They water the word of God down. Well, that, that makes them a blind leader. Now, I love the church, but I hate what's going on with it. God raised me up with the knowledge, spirit and truth. And I have to speak it. I have to preach it. I have to release it because if I don't, it'll burn in my bones until I do. Just like Jeremiah. Jeremiah wasn't very liked either, but that's okay. More and more people are going to start rising up speaking spirit and truth, and we all need to get used to the idea that we have to obey God. Whether you hear from God or not, that's your choice. I said that. It's your choice. God talks to everybody, Amen. even the unsaved. Amen. It's choices. People don't realize that. Even the unsaved. And if you keep rejecting God, He's going to come to you in your sleep. When your pride is out of the way, and your arrogance, and your hatred, and your, <laughs> your resistance, your rebellion, your witchcraft. And he's going to talk to you in your sleep. And if you still refuse to listen to him, then what's going to happen is he's going to make you turn in your bed, and you will have no peace, you'll have no rest until you listen to God. And you need to beware, because in this process, the devil is petitioning against you to kill you. Not a game. People are praying for people 24 hours a day around the world. Even when you're asleep, people are praying for you, whether you know it or not. Sometimes the people don't even know they're praying because they're praying in the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't always tell us what He's praying for. But just know it's God praying for something. Something's taking place. And every time God does something, it's always for the greatest amount of good, for the greatest amount of people to bless them, not condemn them like the devil does. The church needs to come out of its sleep. It needs to come out of its scratching its ears. It needs to come out of being comfortable. It needs to turn around now and arise and stand as they did in the beginning. We're going back to the beginning. Because in the end, you're apostate. And it stops now. Or God's going to judge you. Some churches are going to get shut down in this movement of God that's here. They're going to get shut down because he's had enough of the lie. He's had enough of the, the watering down the word of God. Preaching things that aren't true. Or using half-truths like the devil did on Jesus in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. The church is in trouble as a whole. It's in trouble. But God's beginning to raise up individual churches. And they're going to be humongous churches before he's done. But God's going to use these places where people are starting to gather because they're giving place to the Holy Spirit to do what He wants. They're not only hearing God, but they're listening to God. And Father, right now, I pray for everybody, every saved unto, I don't care. I pray for everybody to receive the ability of the Holy Spirit to hear and then help them make choices and decisions to listen. In the name of Jesus, I pray that, Lord. Amen. And Lord Jesus, you know... The deaf and dumb spirit, we know, it, it, a lot of it has to do with epilepsy. But, the deaf and dumb spirit is also being used in many other ways. It's faceted. And we need to recognize the fact that deaf and dumb means you can't hear and you can't speak. The sad thing is, in too many of us, you can't see either. There's no reason why you cannot hear God. If you choose to hear God, you will no, God will talk to you. People have been taught, and it's sad, but it's true, in religions. In fact, there are some religions that kill people because they heard from God. It's amazing how it takes centuries for them to apologize. Sad. But you know what? That's the cults that do that. Okay? If you don't do things their way, if you don't believe the way they do, they cast you out. Okay? That's not God. God's not going to cast you out. God will never leave you nor forsake you. But He does seek for you to hear Him. He will speak to you. He does speak to you. You just don't recognize that it's Him. 
God will speak to you in the ways that you know. He will speak to you about how you've grown up. He will use the ways that you have been raised up. He will talk to you in those ways until, and then he will begin to transform you into spirit of truth. He will talk to you not only verbally, which can take place. He can talk to you audibly, like I'm talking to you now. He can talk to you the same way. First time I ever heard God's voice, it was audible. I was ready to commit suicide. And I heard audibly, no, you don't. I have a plan for you. Boy, my life changed. From the minute he spoke, it changed. So the Lord speak audibly to everybody. As you please and choose. Change their life. Boom, like that. Start turning them upside down, Lord. Shake them out. Grab them by the feet and shake all the world out of them. Set them free. Holy Spirit, move. Move into these people's lives. Open their ears. Don't you find it interesting? You know, when I was a child, <laughs> my mom would always say, get the corn out of your ears. I find it interesting that Jesus talked about corn. You know, and, and it lets the seed fall on the ground and, and die, it cannot bring forth more fruit. So, correlate those two together spiritually. So, it, it, it's funny that the earwax can plug your ears. Okay, There's other things that can take place in your ears too. But God can heal that. God can change that if you choose. And you can become fruitful in the Lord. Everybody has the ability to hear God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit wants to talk to all of us all the time. You parents, you have children. Don't you want to talk to them all the time? That's called love. God is love, period. He is love. Jesus Christ is the greatest example of love ever. We need to recognize the truth from what's been taught, what's being taught. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, the Father loves you. He loves us so much he sent his son to die for us to take care of our sin. His blood was shed for us to cleanse us and change us into his likeness, which is love. But along the way, it's just like the scripture said in Jeremiah, he knows you're in from your beginning. And he's not going to tell you how he's going to get you there. Okay? Because it, to walk with Jesus is one of the blessed walks you'll ever walk. But it's also one of the hardest walks on this earth because the earth is against Jesus. The devil is against Jesus and he has turned people against Jesus and those who follow Jesus. And it's going to get a lot worse now. But at the same time, it's also going to get a lot better because there's a harvest coming in that cannot be denied. God cannot be denied. God's will, the Father's will cannot be denied. It cannot stop. You cannot stop the will of God from coming forth. You will put your life in danger if you come against God. Amen. That's right. It's like they said in the beginning. Gamaliel said in the very beginning to the elders, hey look, there are these people here, they came and, and what they did, it fell apart. Okay, the, Peter and these others, you better be careful with this one because you might find yourself, if it doesn't fall apart, you might find yourself fighting against God. We've got to understand this is real. Don't find yourself fighting against God, church. Amen. It's bad enough the world does it. You have no business fighting against God and His will. You have no business speaking against the Holy Spirit and His gift. You have no business whatsoever fighting against teaching the gifts of the Holy Spirit and releasing God's people to use the gifts that God gave them as gifts and blessings to help others. Amen. How dare you say the Holy Spirit is no more? How dare you say the gifts of God have been done away with? Especially the gift of tongues, which is a heavenly language given by God to His people. In fact, Jesus even said you will know the true believers because they will speak with a new voice, new language. New tongue. That's the Holy Spirit speaking in them and through them. That's their heavenly language. How dare you touch the holy thing? It's a direct communication in the line to God at His throne. Period. Amen. 
And the spirit realm, which is, is void of light, other than the light of Jesus, is a pure white light going right straight to the throne of God. Like the searchlights. It says exactly what it is. And I pray to God you can look in the spirit realm and see that it's true. When the Holy Spirit is speaking through somebody, it's pure white light. Don't touch it. Because go coming against the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can find yourself blasphemy the Holy Spirit, which is a plague in the church on this earth right now. And there's no forgiveness. Jesus said so. Neither in this world nor the one to come. We're not done here. We're done when Jesus comes back and says it's done. Amen. And those that he knows will remain with him for all eternity. Those he does not know will go to hell. Hell! H-E-L-L. -L. It's real. There's no such thing as a purgatory. There's no such thing as this other stuff that's being taught. It's pure and simple as hell. It's an eternal place of damnation and torment. We're all eternal. And no matter what anybody teaches you, remember that. We are all eternal. Period. Where you choose to, choose to spend that eternity will be your choice in Jesus Christ. There is no other way to heaven than Jesus Christ. You know, they're even making laws. You can't preach that anymore. It's in the world court. Other countries are picking it up. Back in the United States, it'll be the same way. You cannot preach that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Even the Pope is proclaiming you don't need Jesus to get to heaven. Who is this guy? He's not a God. I don't care. He's not a God. He is an Antichrist spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Period. Amen. And if Jesus did not know you, you do not have eternal life with him. You better make sure, like it says in Matthew and Luke both, you better dig deep. And Luke it says dig deep. And make sure it is the true rock. And then build upon that when the storms come. And the storms are here. They've been going on. The church has been tested and they have not done it well. Why? Because Jesus is not in control of them. The Holy Spirit does not have control of them. He is not running the church. The church is running the... <laughs> I'll put it this way. The church is running Jesus and the church is running the Holy Spirit. They're using them. But the Holy Spirit is not free to move. Because if they did, they'd be preaching the truth about Jesus Christ. They'd be preaching the true gospel. And the Holy Spirit would have His way. And the body of Christ would be taught. They would come together in one accord. And they would be taught in church. Not in some room somewhere else or some other class. No. They would be taught in the church with the children there to be raised up in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit through these gifts would reveal the truth about Jesus in spirit and truth. That's why he was given to us. Jesus talked about what was coming. He was the comforter. Jesus said also, I will give you, I will not give you comfortless. I will give you another comforter. It's the Holy Spirit. And he will teach you. No wonder the church wants to do away with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have yet to find a church anywhere that does 1 Corinthians 14. In 25 years, in all the churches I've been, I have never found a church anywhere that does 1 Corinthians 14, especially when it comes to the prophets. Somebody gets a word. The prophets are supposed to stand together and judge that word before the people so the people know whether it be of God or not. I have not seen a church do that anywhere in 25 years. And believe me, I've been in a lot of churches all over and even in other countries. What's wrong with this picture? Well, you got to understand something. The IRS has a, a thing that, that, and I know people make jokes of it, and I'm going to use it. You're a 501c3, you're a non-profit church. And believe it or not, you're under the guise of the IRS, which is like a nation unto itself, a government unto itself. And I guarantee you, if you preach against the government in any way, you preach against homosexuality, gay, lesbians, LGBT, whatever it is. Anyhow, if you preach against that, you preach against abortion, you preach against prayer in school, you preach against anything that the government proclaims, they can come in and take what you have. Everything you have under a 501c3.
It was set up for that purpose, to control the church in days like today. You really need the Holy Spirit to get back in control of your church. And you need to bow to the Holy Spirit. Leaders, I'm talking to you directly. You don't have the authority nor the power to keep the Holy Spirit from moving in your church because you're about to find that out. God is presenting you the option. Hear what the Lord has to say and listen to His voice. I am a holy prophet of God and I'm telling you right now, God's about to move into all leadership and give them an option to either repent and receive what he has to say and what he wants to release the Holy Spirit to do, to bow to him, give him place, and make it about Jesus Christ, not you, the church, the doctrine, theology, or whatever else you're doing. They are not social clubs. They are a place of gathering of the body and bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible spells out very clearly how to run a church, very clearly. And they're not being run according to that. The Holy Spirit was given to run the church for Jesus Christ and to bring the body of Christ together in one accord. One heart, one mind, one soul, blah, blah, blah. We need to understand the Holy Spirit does this. Man cannot do this. It's called unity. And I guarantee you, you can have different opinions in unity. But with one accord, you cannot. God does not care about your opinions. He loves you and He cares about you. But He doesn't care about what you think. That's why he gave us the word of God. You get what he knows. This is why the people, when you go look at, 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 at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, they say, who is this guy? He's, he speaks with authority, not like the scribe Pharisees and lawyers. Right. See, the scribe Pharisees and lawyers are opinionated. But Jesus spoke spirit and truth because he knows. That's why they saw that. They saw. He knew what he knew. He knew what he was talking about. And they could feel it because it was spirit and life. When spirit and life is being spoken, you know it. You know it. You may deny it, but you know it. Leadership was given to lift up the people to God, not yourself. Not to your church. Not for money. Filthy lucre. No. That's why Jesus built the whips in John 2. And cleaned out the land before the temple. Well, the land is the church today. Because most churches are not houses of prayer. Oh, you may go pray. But the Holy Spirit is leading you. You're the one that's doing it. I'd rather have the Holy Spirit move on me to pray. And pray a thousand prayers. Because for me to pray, and I've watched and I've listened... For 25 years, I've watched and listened to prayers. And 90% of them, even God has confirmed this, He even said more than 90% of them are prayers and manipulation, trying to get God to do something. If you look at the prayer when they said, Jesus teaches how to pray, and He gave the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> so that is not a prayer of manipulation, that is a prayer of blessing. A prayer of divine order. A prayer of deliverance and healing. A prayer of pruning and changing things because you're blessed. And you're thanking God for being blessed. And yet they've changed that. You know, when we pray, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done. Most people say on because that's what they're taught. And most Bibles say on earth. No, it's in earth. Us. We are earth. We are the land. It's what God created us of the earth. Because it's in us. Okay? Thy will be done in earth. Change us from the inside so we're not white sepulchers that Jesus ran into. We're not religious. We're spirit and truth. We're eternally spirit. And we give glory to God. And Jesus lives in us. And we live in Him. We are in the Holy Spirit. Just like 1 John 2.27. Boom. The Spirit of the Lord. The anointing is in you. And by the end of that verse, you're, you're in the anointing. You're in the Holy Spirit. The Comforter. And we become like little children. No, we don't act childish. 
No, he's talking about childlike faith, believing just because you heard it. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're little, your mom and dad tells you something, you don't know nothing, right? So you listen, right? You 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 listen. You don't how, you don't fight against it. First of all, you're too young. Second of all, you don't know any better. And thirdly, you know they love you. So why don't we apply that to God? Why don't we apply that to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Like He says, hear and listen to my words. Listen to my voice. Jesus is the voice of prophecy. He releases it through the Holy Spirit. So why can't you hear God? There's no reason you can't. Most of the time, it's you, you, we've been raised in, a, in, in an environment that, that they do away with God. They do away with the Holy Spirit in such a regard that they push away the voice of God. The Holy Spirit. They grieve and quench him. And the Bible says very clearly, do not quench. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's dangerous. If you're not careful, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there's no salvation. Period. You lose your salvation. Period. I don't care who you are. Look, don't think, don't be a lady of sin and think you got it made. Because I guarantee you, you don't. That's the problem with Jesus when he said to the lady of the sins, the problem with the lady of the sins is thing. they got it made because they got Jesus. Oh yeah, well why did Jesus vomit them? Vomit them. Finally, out of his mouth, he says, and I will spew you out of my mouth. Go look up the word spew. By a, he will cast you out. Now, you can push the Lord away. Hebrews 6, 1 through 6 is very, very prevalent in this. But it's also blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, you can blast me the Father, you can blast me the Son. But you, don't you dare blast me the Holy Spirit because there's no forgiveness in this world nor the one to come. And they accused him of doing something by Beelzebub, which he did by the Holy Spirit, a miracle. And they accused him of doing witchcraft using Beelzebub, who is the devil against the Holy Spirit and his gifts. And I guarantee you, it is a plague in the church today. And it needs to stop. Everybody thinks it's, Je it's not Jezebel, it's Beelzebub. You know, people say, oh, there's no conspiracy. Interesting, because if you look at the King James and you look at it, they say there's no conspiracy in the Bible. See, I got news for you. The whole Bible is full of conspiracy. The devil conspires continuously to destroy the gospel of Jesus Christ, to destroy his image, to destroy his people, and especially to destroy the fatherly image. Seen children. So they can't believe that they have a Heavenly Father that loves them. And they believe the Heavenly Father is, is, is an abusive God. The world's abused. It isn't by God. It's by the devil and those who serve him. And believe me, most leaderships, most governments in this world serve Satan, not God. And you want to know why there's so much abuse? So much death. I mean, this COVID thing, it, it's a conspiracy. It's to kill. It's to steal, kill, and destroy. We have no business fearing COVID. When you fear something that's greater than God, you're not right with God. Period. I don't fear it. Because God said I don't have to. The Bible was clear. I don't have to. I don't have to fear any deadly thing that may harm me. I don't have to fear because I got Jesus Christ. I got the Holy Spirit. I got the victory of Jesus Christ and He gave Amen. me on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So why are so many quote-unquote Christians afraid of COVID? Because they're taught to be. Things are changing. And leaders, I'm, I'm warning you right now, you better get in alignment with Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you better ask God. Because if you think you have the Holy Spirit and you preach against the Holy Spirit and His gifts, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You have an Antichrist spirit. 
Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I wish this would be taught. The Lord our God is one. The Father, Yahweh, Ancient of Days, gave His Holy Son and His only begotten Son. Because there's only one Jesus. Any other Jesus than the true Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit is a figurehead. Jesus is the head. He's the bridegroom. Period. Period. He's the one who laid his life down. These other devils and stuff did not lay their lives down. They stole and are trying to steal Jesus Christ's identity. Isn't it interesting that the world is full of Identity theft. Well, it began with the devil trying to steal the identity of Jesus Christ and form his own churches and make his own body with lies, watered-down word, half-truths, just like he did with Jesus. And if you try to do it on Jesus, don't think he's not going to try and do it on you. You need to know the word of God for yourself, not because it's what somebody's preaching you or somebody's teaching you. I'm doing this to wake you up, especially you leaders. Bind yourself in sin. Throw yourself before Jesus and ask for mercy. Because if you don't, you will be judged. Amen. And if you seize control over a church and the people, and if you made them blind, you better repent quickly. Unless God takes your breath. And that breath will send you to hell. God is not playing a game. Man does that. When I say man, I'm talking about hearts of people. Men and women, whatever. Children. And don't think children don't play games with God. Yeah, they do. That's why there's so much lawlessness in this world. Especially in the children. There is no respect. Well, we better be grateful that Jesus came because lack of respect for your parents was a, was reason for you to be stoned to death in, under the law before Jesus. It's real. That's how serious it is to God. Because if you don't respect your parents, you will never respect God. And God is sovereign. And there is a lack of respect for God, especially for Jesus Christ, and most certainly the Holy Spirit. We have come to a place of recognition that we must stand up before the Lord and bow. Yeah, you heard me right. We must stand up and bow. Because to stand up is revealing who you are. To bow is revealing who He is to you. we got to recognize the fact that to bow to God puts God in His throne, in you, which is your heart. We have come to a place of understanding and it's going to get greater and greater as every day with every breath you take. God's going to begin to expose what's going on with you. And it's not going to be fun. It's going to be messy. It's going to be like vomit. And I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. It's going to get messy. It's going to get stinky because God's going to reveal all the religion in you if you're religious. God's going to reveal all the lies in you if you're a liar and been listening to liars. You will become what you're around. That's true. Yeah, right. You want the true Jesus and you better find some place to go who preaches the true Jesus or you'll be under the guise of self-deception and you will end up being self-deceived because you're going to receive that deception of the devil and half-truths, watered-down truths, scratching, itching ears and everything else. Jesus is the greatest act of love. He, he represents the Father who is love. Amen. And the Father's love is in him for us. He had no problem laying his life down, but before he laid his life down, he laid out the new covenant. We're not under the law in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ Jesus, you're under the law. Plain and simple. It is that simple, but it is also that dangerous and that serious. 
And anybody who does not preach the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the gifts, and tongues, you're out of order. And if you're in leadership, God have mercy on you. Because God is bringing judgment to you first. Yeah, you heard me. I said, Lord, he told me one day that your judgment was coming to the house of God. To his family. I said, Lord, he said, my scripture says very clearly that judgment begins at the house of God first. So, God's coming to every church that declares his name. And every person. But he's coming to leadership first. And this is what he said to me. I said, Lord. I said, it's, it's not fair. I said, the people have been deceived by what's in front of them. Because they really trust and believe because they've been to school. And the Lord says to me, he says, my son, don't you think by the time I deal with the leadership, everybody else will be throwing themselves before me? Now think about that for a minute. This is what happened with King Herod. Okay? And far too many leaders, and I've seen it, it's the spirit of, of, of preeminence. It's in 3 John. Watch out! For any leader who comes against the pure word of God, someone speaking by the Holy Spirit, from Jesus, speaking spirit and truth, that will not receive, that will not listen, will not hear, cast it down, and cast out or push them out of their church. You know, I said their church. Because a church of Jesus Christ led by the Holy Spirit, glorifying Jesus Christ, will never do that. Period. And believe me, I've been cast out of many places. And it's always the leadership that comes against you. So beware and be warned. And by the way, the churches that did it to me, people were getting saved in the church. People have been sitting there for decades, some of them. There's been a couple that was in there for 30 years. They got converted. In fact, one church, well, I will not go there. Thank you, Lord. They were getting miracles. A leg was healed. An arm was healed. Individuals, there were several individuals who got delivered of smoking. And God cleaned out their lungs and their bodies. By the way, I was one of them. That's when I met Jesus. He did it to me. And other things, the preaching, they were being, they heard preaching they never heard before. And one lady, in fact, I'll, get, I'll tell you how bad it is. One lady came to me and said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing about this predestination. And I go, yeah. She says, well, only the predestined gets into heaven. I said, not necessarily. I said, but yeah, most people that, that go to heaven, Jesus already knows them. She said, well, why should I even try? She's been taught this garbage. Predestination only means that Jesus knew you before you were formed in the womb of your, own, your mother. Everybody. That's all it means. But you can't give up just because you don't believe you're good enough. That was the whole problem. She was put down so much and the preaching <laughs> backed that up. I know the church, and I guarantee you, the church had blood on its hand for its preaching. And it was to control and keep control of the people. And there was one of the churches that ended up throwing me out. In fact, it sent this big, huge bodyguard. <laughs> I just laughed at him, just like I just laughed. You know? Reminds me of Smith's will where he, the devil showed up at the end of his bed and he woke and I saw it's just you. That's what basically how I felt toward this great big huge bodyguard. <laughs> and this church, the people, the leaders in this church actually have had, I don't know if they're still on TBN or not, but it was a major ministry on TBN. So I'm just, I'm using these as an example especially to your leaders, but to you people to listen. Find out who your leaders are. Find out who you're sitting under. Find out what doctrine they are. You know, the Baptists, many Baptist 
churches, and, and I'm just putting this out there generally, so don't get up, don't, don't be offended. I'm just putting it out there generally, so you can take it to the Lord and talk to Him about it. I have found most Baptist churches do away with, even though they say we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, especially in baptism, but they don't teach, nor will they allow the Holy Spirit to move or, or speak. They preach against tongues, and they preach predestination, or uh, not predestination, um, rapture. Hmm? rapture. Rapture. The rapture. Well, I'm, I'm, no, um, Oh, dispensation of time. Thank you. I knew you'd bring it to me. They, they, they preach dispensation of time. Dealing with the Holy Spirit and the gifts, especially tongues. Well, again, it's a heavenly language given to us. It is our heavenly language. And the devils can't understand it because it's of the Holy Spirit. That's why they want to do away with it. That's why they basically curse it. Their teachings are teachings of witchcraft to destroy the Holy Spirit in you and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially your heavenly language, which they can't understand. Okay? So we need to recognize, and I'm just speaking these things because things are about to happen. Leadership, I'm warning you, get right with God now before it's too late because God said some are going to die. Now, God's been taking people, but it isn't because of this. Okay? Some people are being removed in leadership who have great influence on people because they're living in the past. And God's not going to allow that to influence what He's about to do because He's the future. And He's not going to do what's been done before. What God's about to do, man has never seen before. That's why billions of people are going to get saved. God's going to reveal Himself in ways that most people have never recognized, never heard of. But most Christians desire to see or be part of. Now, this movement of God is going to glorify Jesus Christ as the King of Glory, which has not been done yet. That's how I know it is the final movement of God. The great harvest is going to come in and be where they're going to go. Who's going to teach them? How's, who's going to lead them? Who's going to raise them up and mentor them in spirit and truth? Those who the Holy Spirit has chosen, who trust Him, believe Him, and is led by Him. Amen. Like Jesus. Jesus is the one who chooses who He chooses. We have nothing to say about it. And if you're a chosen vessel and you're resisting God, you will give in to God. It's just a matter of what you're willing to go through before you say, Okay, Lord, I'm one of those. Okay? So, I can tell you from experience, you don't want to go there. Oh my God, have mercy if you choose to go that route. Oh, have mercy. But, I guarantee you that when you do say yes, your entire life will be turned upside down and you will rejoice and be glad that you said yes. Amen. God has raised up an army of leaders. Why? To replace the leaders that are in the churches now. Because they're not going to give place to God because of preeminence. The preeminent spirit is so strong that they will literally seek to kill you if need be. They want to put a stop to the pure gospel. They want to put a stop to the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, any church who says LGBTQ, whatever they call it, and abortion is okay, you're not of God. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're not of God. Amen, amen, amen. Because the Bible says so. Amen. Jesus said so when he was here. And I guarantee you right now that God is the one who destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Yep. And that's what they were. And if you think that's not true, you just keep in the lifestyle you're in, and I guarantee you, you'll find out it is true in the end. Okay? What destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was fire and brimstone. The, it was pieces of sulfur. And it turned the entire city to dust, to clay. Even though some of the monuments, and they have found pieces of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it, they, it's almost like they're frozen in time. But you just touch them and they go to powder. You just touch them, it goes to powder. 
it's like a, your dry clay with nothing to hold it in place. And it's just, literally, it's just a poof. That's what's going to happen to the Sodomites and the rest. It is against God. It's the opposite of God. And it is damnation to God. And God will bring judgment. You're in a church that says it's okay. There's your lady to see us. There's your blind leaders leading the blind. And I don't care what, I don't care what denomination you are, I don't care what, I don't care what you've learned and haven't learned. God says it's not of him. Period. Okay. And leaders, you will be held responsible. You have blood on your hands for every person that you teach it's okay. You have blood on your hands. And you will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ with your hands dripping with the blood of people who went to hell because you wouldn't speak the truth. Right. Because you're not of the truth. And the Holy Spirit is not in you because he will never preach or speak against the truth of God. Ever. So you have another spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. You have some form of familiar spirit, spirit guide, or just plain the devil. But hell resides in you, not in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus cannot reside in an unholy temple. He cannot and will not. Whoa. But when you receive Jesus Christ, He comes in and He starts cleaning you up. But when you turn against that, He backs up. Doesn't mean He loves you. doesn't love you. Oh yeah, He loves you. But He cannot condone such sin. And it is sin. And I'm sure this is going to cause all kinds of trouble. But I don't care. The Bible is real. Jesus Christ is real. The Word of God is the foundation of heaven. And if you can't handle that, then you have no place in heaven. And you'll find yourself in hell eventually. But it's not too late. As long as you have not blasphemed the Holy Spirit, anything, all things are forgivable. All things are forgivable. But blasphemy the Holy Spirit. Jesus said so. You can even blast me the Father, you can blast me the Son. It's forgivable. But blast me the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness in this world nor the one to come. <coughs> Beware and be warned. Know who's teaching you. Know where you're at. If God sends you into these places to do something, make sure you have the full armor of God on you. In fact, I ask, I ask God to put the heaviest war armor on me when I, He sends me into these places. And go in with his authority. Don't go in to cause trouble. No, that's not your job. That's his job. But go in to do what he sent you there to do. Pray. Do war. Or whatever else he shows you or speaks to you. If he tells you to speak, speak. If he tells you not to, don't. If he doesn't say speak, then don't speak. And God does this with people. I know. I've been there. He still has me do it. I never go to church for me, ever. I did when I began, but he taught me, and that was while he was changing me. And once he got, began to change me, he began to teach me new things. And as he enthroned me in his throne, I realized I go to church for him and everyone else. Because I'm supposed to have my time with the Lord before I go anywhere. And so in that time, is my time that God prepared me for what he's going to do next. Especially when he sends me into a church or a meeting or anything. <clears throat> I had no message, as always. I wait on him for a message. I had no message, so I was pacing back and forth. When worship started, we started worshiping, and, and I still had nothing. So I just kept pacing back and forth. I was walking with God, seeking his face, finding out what he wants. And I knew, I knew when he released it because tears came to my eyes, and I knew it was him grieving. And I began to weep for this message. Because that's his heart. He doesn't want to implement what he's going to have to implement because of your choices and your decisions. God gave us responsibility to make choices and decisions. That's why he doesn't force as well. Sometimes he does, but not the way people view, not the way people think. God will move us. He will send people in. He will put roadblocks in front of you. He'll close doors. 
He'll open another door, but he's always working around you to put you where you need to be. He does not condemn you. If you choose to, to receive, believe, and do what others do that are not of God, and you made your choice and decision, and that will become your judgment when you stand before Jesus Christ. You cannot blame anybody. Nobody. Nobody has anything to do with your life. That's all you. Everything in your life that you choose to decide, that is your authority. That is your empower. That is your will to be done. But that is also what will judge you in the end. Jesus only implements the judgment of what you've chosen and done. And God gets a bad rap, by the way. We always blame God for everything. Why? Because we're making bad choices and decisions. So we blame Him. He's God. He could change anything. Well, He didn't have to let that happen. Yeah, He did. What do you mean He did? Well, you made the choice. He had to let that happen. He couldn't interfere with your will to be done. I used to preach and teach Romans 12, 1 and 2 about the will of God. And I used to preach that there's actually two wills. And actually, technically, there really is two wills in the spirit realm. But the will of God, there's only one will. And it's His way. Because the will of the Father is to glorify His Son. To receive Jesus is glorifying Him. Because when the Father is glorified, the Son... Is, when, the, when the Son is glorified, the Father is already glorified. Okay? You know that from John 17 and other places. But when you choose not to obey God, now your will is in place. That's the second will. So, these are the two gods, by the way, that's talked about in the Bible. There's God and there's Mammon. Mammon is self. And anything that is selfish or childish. God is sovereign, is blessed. And in that is childlike faith. So, God made us children. So I don't care how old you are, you have a child alive in you. We're all in within us. Well, the, we choose to overcome that and look over that because what the world tells you. Um, they, we have to be adults. Well, why can't we also be childlike? Again, I go back to when we're little children and our mom and dad says something to us, we just believe, we obey. Why? Because we don't know any better. We, we got to get back to that. Everybody thinks they know something. Well... The main thing you need to know is that Jesus Christ is Lord, He's King, and He's Sovereign. He's eternal. Amen. And anything beyond that, what do you know? Nothing. Unless God gives it, it's nothing. And we've got to lay down everything that we think we know because it becomes pride. That's why the world says that knowledge is pride. I know it seems like I'm bouncing around, but I'm not bouncing around because all these things fit together because this is what's being taught in the church. And this is what happened to the church. The church is a pocket. Why are they a pocket? Because they're not obeying God. God has no place in the church as a whole today. They have grieved and quenched the Holy Spirit. He has no place to run the church. Everybody is using God as a figurehead, but they're using God to do what they want. And every different, every different denomination has their own theologies, their own ways of doing things. And I don't care. Even the Pentecostal churches, they're no different. I know I've been in and out of them. I've been thrown out of them. They're speaking the same word that was spoken by two people before I got there. And this is witnessed by many people. I found out about it later. I was physically thrown out by eight men. The pastor leading it. And that was in a four-square church. I was asked to leave an Assembly of God Church. I've been told by pastors, you have at least a gift of prophecy, but you're not allowed to use it here because you're not a member of this church. Excuse me? This is the doctrines and theologies that God is talking about. 
He wants it stopped. There is only one bride. There is only one body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are family. How dare you divide the family of God and make it of none effect. That's what apostasy means. You take the things of God and you multiply them. You split them up. That's what the devil does. He divides. You got all these different denominations. When I got saved, I looked in the phone book. God said, look in the phone book and count all the numbers. Count how many different denominations there are in the religion and churches. And I did. There were 66. <laughs> and what is the number of man? <laughs> Hello? I'm a brand new Christian. <laughs> Come on. This is what man has done because they've given place to Satan to do this. This is what Jesus was talking about. we got to recognize Jesus wasn't just talking about then, nor was he talking about now. He was also talking about the future. If you don't believe me, go read uh, John 17 and also 7 and 17 both. Especially when it's talking about, you know, they say that you know, Lord, we have prophesied. He says, you won't know them by the He goes on to say that. They, they say, Lord, we, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not healed in your name? Have we not done miracles in your name? And what did he say to them? He said, I will say to you in that day, I never knew you. Depart. Now that's the future. That was the, that was a present when he was talking about the future. Now go read Matthew twenty five. In fact, it is Matthew seventeen, if I remember. Twenty one, and and twenty one, twenty two, somewhere in there. But he said in, in Matthew twenty five, the first fourteen verses about the ten virgins. Okay, and we got to recognize something. The church fell asleep. Matthew twenty five is about today. I find the interesting they all had had lamps. And yet only had them have extra oil. And all the lamps went out. They all went out. And only those who had the holy fire could start their lamps. It's a strong teaching, but it's real. Because they didn't believe what God had to say. They heard, but they listened, but they didn't obey. They didn't believe. They didn't stand up and get the holy fire which is kingship, to be enthroned with him. So he can teach us how to rule and reign and not lose what he gave us. So we can learn to walk in the victory that Jesus gave us on the cross, which we're not as a whole. But at the end of that, they wake up. They hear the sound of the bridegroom coming and they waken up. And... Uh, I'm going to say this real quick. So people say, well, that's okay. No, now listen. In John 10, it talks very clearly that Jesus said, there is another body, not of this one, but they shall become as one. That's the Jew and Gentile coming together. Yeah, okay? amen. And we're messianic because of Jesus, the Messiah. One we are all messianic in the Holy Spirit through the blood of the Lamb. Okay? This is one of the reasons God scattered Israel throughout all of the world. Everybody has Jewish blood in them. Amen. They can't say, well, I'm not Jew. Oh, but you do have Jewish blood. Because he scattered them all over the world. And I don't care what anybody says. He made sure that everything was crossed over. So they can't say, well, I'm, uh, yeah, we're all under the law until you receive Jesus in spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. And confess him from your heart as your Lord. Whosoever confesses Jesus Christ as Lord shall be saved. It must come from the heart. You can't just say it has to come from the heart. It must be a confession. Not lip service. So in that process, the reason I said that is because of what I'm about to say. The noise of the bridegroom was coming. As he's coming. That's taking place today. Mm -hmm.